Have you ever noticed that people who are less anxious and less stressed work in a calmer, more relaxed way? Look, happier people work better. Fact. <laughs> Look, there's so much research on this. Forbes, Oxford University and The Economist to name just three. I don't even know why there's still a debate around this. Apart from all the research available, it just seems so obviously true. Now, I'll link to all the articles discussed in this video in the description below. Now, is it our job as Scrum Masters to make people happy? Well, no. Look, we're not there to be comedians, but we are there to help the team deliver value every day to our customers. So let's talk about it. Now, given that people are more productive if they're happier, then to me, it just stands to reason that if there's something we can do in a work context that would alleviate stress, then we should do it. Now, we're not there as life counsellors, but we are there to help the team deliver. One way to help make people happier at work is to limit your work in progress and reduce your context switching. Now, this is or should be within the, our gift as Scrum Masters or Agile Coaches. Having too much work in progress and context switching is proven to result in higher stress, lower well-being, frustration and anxiety. They are silent killers and cost you a huge tax in throughput and results in lower quality work. Now, they also take an emotional toll on workers. You know, the pressures of juggling multiple tasks and deadlines create stress and anxiety. Now, some say completing additional tasks makes people happier, but research says otherwise. Now, according to a Harvard Business Review article about multitasking and happiness, time spent on tasks correlates with perceived happiness. Now, in his book, Quality Software Management, System Thinking, computer scientist Gerald Weinberg says that context switching can reduce employee productivity by 80%. According to Weinberg, we lose 20% of our productivity power with each new simultaneously juggled task. So, if we take on five competing assignments in one hour, losing our state of flow costs us up to 80% of what we could have accomplished otherwise. Our limiting the work in progress can halve the time it takes to get something done. Now, this statement often seems counterintuitive. Do less, get more done. <laughs> and because of this, it doesn't always receive the attention it deserves. But the truth is, if we can have the, the discipline to actively manage how much we're working on at any given time at both the individual and team levels, we can gain the focus to get work done quickly with higher quality. Now, this means that by doing less at a time, we actually get more done. A focus is what enables us to create high quality work from start to finish. And WIP limits train us to focus on moving things through to done as quickly as possible with as few distractions, delays or handoffs as possible. Now, this includes meetings. When we have excessive meetings, particularly status meetings, because everyone on the team is juggling multiple pieces of work at once, it becomes much more difficult to keep everyone on the same page. Meetings are not inherently the problem. The problem is because we've got too much whip. Most of our calendars are filled up with status meetings. Many of us don't even have the time to prepare for these meetings during the normal working day. And because of this, it often takes the first half of the meeting to get everyone aligned on what is being discussed and what needs to be decided on to move forward, which means our meetings are longer and less efficient. And of course, there's also the logistical difficulty of scheduling meetings, which can result in significant delays when people's calendars are blocked weeks in advance. Our work might be delayed because of the five people you need in this meeting couldn't find 30 minutes to get in a room together and make a decision. It's worth considering what's the cost of delaying this piece of work for weeks at a time. And not to mention the collective salary of everyone involved in a meeting and what they could do if they spent that hour delivering focused high quality work instead. But you'll soon realise that status meetings come with a hefty price tag. Now, some people think they are great context switchers, often referred to as multitasking. But research shows that those who think they're good at multitasking are actually among the worst. According to research by David Strayer, a professor of psychology at the University of Utah, only 2% of people are actually good at multitasking, which means the other 90% of us mere mortals are rubbish at it. In fact, the more we multitask or context switch, the worse we become. And there's a famous test you can do from the University of Newcastle in Australia to see if you're one of the 2% or supertaskers, as Professor David Strayer calls them. Now, for the rest of us, when we context switch, it's not just productivity we lose. The toll is far greater than that. Now, if you're using Scrum, then start by making sure you've got a product vision, a product goal, and a single sprint goal. This should naturally limit your work in progress. But to help further, put a wit limit on your in-progress work and stick to it. Don't ignore it. Try it for a few weeks and then inspect and adapt. 
and make sure you do one thing at a time, finish it and then move on to the next thing. This reduces your context switching, stop starting and start finishing as they say, well, as David J. Anderson said back in 2004. And by doing this, you'll get more done faster and with a higher degree of quality. Yes, really. <laughs> Now, if you're finding that you can't limit your work in progress or reduce your context switching, my suspicion would be that you have some anti-patterns present. Now, it could be that you're trying to develop more than one product at a time, or you've got more than one product owner. So sit down as a team and have a chat about it and find a way to make it happen. It'll be good for your health as well as productivity. It's a win-win for everyone, you, the team, the organization, and of course, the customer. Now, for a deeper dive on limiting your work in progress and reducing your context switching, check this video out. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It really helps our community on this channel and I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, stay humble and I will see you next Thursday for another Agile Thought.